For all the latest reviews, interviews and everything entertainment in Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam and Telugu, subscribe to Film Companion South now. Hi Rahul, welcome to Film Companion South. Hi, how are you? Uh, we just, I'm talking to you just a couple of days after watching uh, Bodha Kalam and it's been getting a lot of great response from, I think, not just Kerala, I think, uh, even from outside Kerala, it's been getting a lot of great reviews. And it's such a fascinating film. Uh, it's it's not it's not a film that you consume and you forget. It's a film that kind of keeps playing in your head. It's a film that has left a lot of questions in my in my head. Uh, that's that's the kind of interview I want to do with you. It shouldn't just be a, uh, an in- interview where we're discussing the the peripherals. It's a movie that I want sure, to kind sure. of go really in depth with you. Audience, I mean, you guys need to be aware that there's going to be a lot of spoilers. So please watch the movie and then only watch the yeah, watch the interview. Now let me start with. uh my first question are you a script writer or are you a script narrator i would say that i'm a script writer i can't i don't narrate very well <laughs> i am i have find it very hard to narrate but uh, but i i have a request uh, i have a request uh to ask of you can, how can you just place that first shot for me because it's a it's an incredible first shot and i just want to kind of either you can tell me what you wrote or you can tell me how you kind of described it to the first person you described it to uh i think the first person i uh that shot came from uh, i have that image in my mind for a long time you know uh, a static frame and you hold on to that frame for a long time and uh, as an audience you look at it and after a while something gets into that frame so i had that image and uh, you know uh, a person coming uh, entering that uh, into the bedroom and sitting beside another another character so that image has been there for quite some time and when i pitched the idea to uh, revathi ma'am and shane i didn't actually pitch this the, this particular scene i just narrated the the story as a whole but i think uh, the first person to pitch that particular scene was to to my producer mr anwar rashid and uh, that's how i narrated uh, the the story and it in went on from there it's not a it's i mean of course if you've seen the trailer you're expecting a mood you're you're prepared for a certain kind of movie but uh, that's not at all the setting right that's not at all the way the movie starts it's it's a very uh i i felt it was so scary because that's that's not the setting i mean that's not that's the last place you would expect something like that to be found you know i mean i mean it's not yeah. a, it's not, i mean i if you i mean i i can be a little more open about it but just the yeah. way that a person is walking out and the the, the yeah. fact that her hair is white you're thinking is this real is this is this not it kind of sets the mood for the entire film right so that's why i wanted yeah. to kind of go uh, in, into that but how did you yeah. kind of uh, when you're explaining the film to people uh, you know it's a genre yeah. film right it, it, uh, at the yes. core of it it's a genre film it's a horror film but when you're trying yeah. to pack a horror film with so many psychological aspects uh now of course we've seen movies like get out and us and all that but then at yeah. least when when you're in the process of writing it was it a very challenging process because you have to have a lot of elements because it's a genre film but you also have to break a lot of genre elements because you're trying to say a, a deeper more complex story so how was that yeah. that, that mix uh i would say that i i, I want to place this in a genre in a horror genre but uh, at its heart it's a story about this mother and son asha and vinu and uh, like you mentioned in uh, in the trailer i wanted to play most of the story by deceiving the audience you know to keep that uh, dramatic irony of suspense you know horror the genre already uh, pushes you know that little suspense of disbelief it already walks that thin line so trying to find that right balance was only through by achieving perfect uh, blend of emotion and uh, performance and to achieve that of course uh, i had to get a good cast so horror was always secondary i i wanted the emotional you know aspect of that uh, you know the whole uh, film to work first that's how i even narrated the whole story to even the actors even the production house uh, to tell them that uh, you know uh, uh, even though it's a horror film it's about uh, it's an allegory for grief drama it's an allegory for uh, isolation or uh, you know emotional longing and how this uh, this family is slowly going insane and uh, you know later on it affects 
there's you know social life and it becomes a social stigma so yeah that's that's how fra- i framed it uh, you know the horror was always on the second second side so the emotional thing had to be uh, we have to empathize with the characters so that's that's only when i feel uh, fear can be generated so that was my main motive you mentioned a very important point about empathizing with the characters but uh, that's what it is right uh, it's a movie uh, at least um, i mean i counted at least until uh, the first hour uh, we are yeah. almost completely with shane and a little bit with uh, revathi ma'am's character uh, we are mm-hmm. seeing especially the nights we're seeing almost entirely through shane it's only after yeah. about an hour that you get an external outsider coming into the house and uh, getting yeah. you to see what what this house looks like or these people look like from the outside but until yeah. then everything that we see is through shane in the process of writing it how do you kind of see it, it, it does it have to when you are uh, introducing super uh, super natural elements at least in the writing did you uh, write that as real things or did you write that as hallucinations uh-huh. no i wanted to be as uh, realistic as possible because even though there is a, uh, i want to achieve that uh, uh, the best form of realism even though i am telling a, a fictional story so i had to choose through which perspective i had to say the story from so initially there was only two characters and i had to play around with those perspective but only in the second part of the film that uh, you know i am able to tell uh a different version of uh, you know another perspective through some static shots through some empty shots and uh, through that and that can be achieved by uh, you know uh, there's a lot of negative space in if you notice in the first half there's another perspective even i'm trying to which i'm trying to uh, you know t- tell the audience so uh, yeah it, the the first half of the movie all uh, it's it's traveling through uh, definitely through um shane's perspective and how uh you know establishing their uh, life and it's a it we we actually planned it uh, you know to set a pace for the first half so that you know the second half can be taken a little bit on a different notch yeah so through perspective is what i feel uh, you know three different perspective and when you see the third perspective which is we as an audience it actually connects very well you know uh, you know when you come to the towards the ending of the film so yeah that's that's my take on you know uh, you mentioned a very interesting point there uh, you're trying to a uh, place a house so you you're trying to place a house and you've already got these frames in your mind you're very st- like yeah. like especially with the use of a lot of static frames uh, yeah. but what i find what really scared me about the film and the people of course is how regular they are you know usually when 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 you are when you are making a film when you are like when we talk about the scariest movies that we generally discuss like whatever the nun and all those kind of annabelle and all that there is an element of us never uh, approaching or meeting those kind of people like we will never see a house like that plus we will never meet people like that so there's always the comfort of that distance that you feel but yeah. uh, but when it come to bhutakalam we know people like shane we are either shane ourselves or we know people like shane uh, yeah. the same thing uh, you know women like revathi or your mother is a lot like revathi that that's how yeah. you kind of connect to them as people and yeah. that house right uh, i think a large reason why that house becomes so scary is because you've seen a thousand houses like that yes uh, yes especially in malayalam uh, bargavi nalema whichever whichever house you kind of take as a scary house there is always an image of that house right it's a big house it it yeah. once had a lot of grandeur and splendor and all that but this house yeah. right from the beginning is 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 yeah. you know it's it's very regular but the pain is also real because of that can you take yeah. me through the process of that uh, i wanted the house to be see when we watch a horror film and when we expect to see a haunted house the first thing that comes in mind is a, a huge bungalow or a you know something like that but i wanted this house to be a regular you know the next door kind of and you know that kind of a feeling where it has got uh, one of pains and rusty gates and it has to be simple with mosaic floors and uh, it it becomes the character at one point the house becomes the character at one point so it uh, it has to uh, 
strengthen the central idea where like you mentioned uh, most of the hollywood films they show a lot of explicit mm-hmm. images to just to create fear but my idea was not to show any kind of gore or any kind of uh, you know i i thought fear can be achieved with uh, the suggestion or absence of explicit images and and how to tell a ghost story without showing a ghost so that was my initial take so the house becomes a character like like i mentioned and how it connects uh, with the central character and how it plays a part along the you know journey towards the end yeah and you handle a lot of things very minimally like like uh, uh, for instance of course you're getting to know shane but very early on uh, I, at the first time i watched the movie two times but the first time i watched it i didn't really understand why he's giving his friend 500 rupees and saying anna vaangcha sanathana anyu ruva but somehow yeah. it kind of it, it, yeah. it plants an idea in your head you know yeah, it's yeah. not otherwise yeah. if you tell anyu ruva anna ni anna kadam vaangcha anyu ruva if you say something like that usually when you return money you explain yeah. why what you borrowed it for but when you just return yeah. the money without saying what it was for it kind of plants an idea in your head similarly there are very like minimal uses of dialogue but it conveys a lot of meaning i thought especially with the way that within the within the within the, the course of one conversation revathi says something like okay uh, like ninda achin ingan thiru manushan ayirunu kada mathre varthi vechittullo but she also goes yeah. on to say nyan var nyan indakiya abadha abadhangalonu nee indakirudu can you tell me a little bit about the process of writing those kind of dialogues because it's a very simple dialogue but It, yeah. it's up to the audience to fill up the rest right yeah uh, minimalism was is uh the the initial idea I, i wanted to keep it very minimum even though in terms of shots or in the in terms of uh, dialogue delivery uh i wrote a scene with some dialogues and i had the opportunity to uh, you know uh, uh, improvise with the actors and put in their version of the best and uh, we had that space to uh, you know play around with uh, you know the dialogues the scene and to mm-hmm. choreograph everything so what you see in the film is all uh, uh, it feels you know kind of real it's not a forced way of uh, you know delivering dialogue so and that can that can be seen in their body language even if it's very subtle and so yeah i try to keep it as minimal as possible because that's the whole nature of the film it's 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 set in that same it's set in that space uh so let's go a little deeper into like particular scenes uh, like i had a few questions here and there uh when you were writing uh, the portions like it starts with uh the night like the the the, mm-hmm. the last night of the grandmom and uh the, the 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 credits start with her staring at us uh, uh at yeah. the camera at us whichever way you want to call it Yeah. uh but can you tell me a little bit about what is shane shane's character what's his mindset when that happens has 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 that sleeplessness or that insomnia already started before that or is the death of the grandmother that starting the the, the entire uh, turmoil inside him uh it's actually uh, uh i try to play with uh, deception actually you know uh, it i i the the mental illness or you know the de- clinical depression or anything all those factors were just an underlying factor just to deceive the audience saying that you know the family has already got a history and and when you explain something something like that a situation where uh, you know something supernatural where you can't explain so uh, as a third person you immediately connect with their background or immediately connect with their uh, isolation or their past or their kind of addiction it's kind of deceiving by saying that uh, you know uh, you can try that's the that's a tricky part in the horror it, like i mentioned it already walks a fine line it has to hide few things but at the same time it had to reveal few characters so it's those uh balance between fear and sorrow and just to uh, you know i feel fear and sorrow is the two sides of the same coin and and how to ba- you know bounce between that emotions and uh, that's so in the first half you see shane uh, you know uh, you know by, you know finding it very difficult to survive and in this complex 
it's very perplexed world uh, fighting all the time having conflicts with his mother because the, the, nobody's understanding his uh, you know him as a, a person and uh, that's a journey that he carries throughout the throughout the film yeah towards a resolution actually yeah. but when you go deeper into revathi's character you always wrote her as a person with uh, uh, clinical depression right somebody who's taking medication somebody who's yeah. dealing with uh, mental health issues for a long time yeah which is why i wanted to ask you what is the uh, reason why you wrote a counselor character like that i'm not saying uh, i'm not uh, i'm not questioning your uh, like the, i understand it's a fictional sure. movie and then uh, yeah. you know it's it's your yeah. choice to make her uh, uh, however you want but uh, eventually yeah. you write the counselor as a character that you cannot rely on right or somebody who uh, who's furthering her isolation so can you just tell yeah. me the logic in terms of plot about writing a character like a unreliable counselor character yeah uh, that's that's where the uh, that fiction meets reality all those questions about logic comes into place uh, because uh, when you try to express this is all about fear right and when you try to express fear it's very difficult for the third person to take it in because fear is very 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 subjective and uh, if you don't convey it uh, you know the other person will take it in a very in a very different shade so uh, a character like the george comes in the second phase of the film and he tries to figure out what is happening so he immediately connects them with their past but the the thing is the real adversary is totally different something that neither of us can't understand because you can't fight it because you know if you if you have to fight it you need to know what kind of adversary it is so how do you fight something that you don't understand how do you fight something that you don't know and that's a state when you become very helpless and in the second half of the film you can notice that uh, shane as the the protagonist and asha uh, uh, as the mother they just go down ways you know downhill and uh, there is no revenge motive there is no fighting back motive it's just disturbed it's very uncomfortable and and uh, even a third person coming into their life he is helpless so even if he is a doctor or a, or a counselor you can't really understand something uh, what these people are experiencing only you can help them when you totally understand but if you can't understand what is going on how do you help them so that's the logic behind bringing up a character like george i'll tell you how i saw the film right because uh, mm. uh, personally speaking horror is a genre that doesn't work on me like it's a it's a film mm. that most of the films they just i just watch it and it means nothing it's like just it's something i yeah. watch with complete uh, detachment but yeah. uh, for me this movie worked so well because i look at it as uh uh like the if, if you can call them ghosts but then i i look at them as the ghosts of a mental illness you know it can happen yeah. to anybody like uh, uh, uh when yeah. you go through trauma when you grow up in a house like that where you are uh, uh, not only does your mother have a, a form of mental illness but then she has yeah. brought you up in such a controlled manner right where you have no freedom and you have never uh, had the space to even express what you feel and what you are going through so when you grow yeah. up in a house like that i felt the horrors was a stand in for anything as in it could be yeah. anxiety it could be uh, hallucinations it could be depression it could be anything uh, yeah. which is why i find it very interesting that the last 20 minutes or so of the film that's the only time at night in the film when ram revathi is not taking her uh, medicine it's it's after her yeah. medicines have, uh, have run out right so yeah. uh, how do you kind of explain that part to me like uh, uh, because that's literally the only time where where you are actually seeing revathi awake at night uh, without the help of those medicines yeah, it's uh, it's a left to interpretations actually people <laughs> say that uh, you know uh, it could be inside their head uh, you know because uh, these people are visualizing things it's because of uh, you know so <laughs> uh, but when you look at the surrounding you you feel that you know uh, it's a haunted house at the end of the day because that's the news that you get from uh, but when you look at uh, you know stand in the shoes of the characters you feel that it's all happening inside their head even a slightest uh, you know a barely audible sound can create doubts inside your head just like how you know those doubts are created in the character's head 
so it's it's like i mentioned is all played with those emotions and trying to bounce here and there and trying to uh, play with that uh, you know uh, dramatic irony and kind of stretching it uh, to the maximum until the last 20 minutes because uh, dramatic irony is where you know that works very well in horror film because that's when the as an audience you know but the character doesn't so that is something which uh, can give you a very uh, for a lack of a better word haunting experience in a very personal and relative relatable way yeah that's what it's very interesting that you uh, chose to introduce a character like saiju kurup because uh, mm-hmm. honestly speaking for me the second you introduce saiju kurup and then you kind of follow the background of the house for me the film became comfortable again do you understand yeah. what i'm trying to say for yes, me it was yes, extremely yes. scary until then but the second yeah. you take it and you explain it with a with a cinematic logic whatever you want to call it it because yeah. it it takes me back to a comfortable space where i feel like yeah. this okay it, it 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 this is fiction this is yeah. something that is magical or mystical or whatever you want to call it uh, so can yeah. you just explain that decision to me that's what uh, when a character like uh, george comes in plays this a kind of comfort that we feel you know you know by then we actually feel start to feel for the character and by then you feel that you know somebody else can see things that these people are not able to see and uh, in my initial draft it was like uh, the character george was trying to help them towards the mm-hmm. end but uh, that is something the audience can you know <laughs> expect and uh, they will expect that you know a third person can come into their life and uh, give them a uh, solution for what they're facing but i'm taking that comfort away again and trying to <laughs> put the same danger back into these two characters so that uh, you know let them <laughs> uh, you know try to come out of it on their own so that it works because uh, for me as a whole as a character's arc i wanted the journey of asha and i i wanted them to resolve uh, you know before i exploded with <laughs> you know all those uh, things that you see at the end so their resolution is what mattered for me and they have to do within themselves because um, unconditional love is the the biggest thing you know anything you can you can beat anything with love so that unity between mother and son even though uh, i try to bring those dynamics in the first half of the film and trying to tear it apart in the second half and then uh, you know they they reunite once again so it has to come within them you know without a you know help of somebody else so there's a, i feel it becomes more there's a completion to it to the character so that's why saiju kurup's character i i kept it very limited because the central focus shouldn't go anything else <laughs> apart from the mother and son character i wanted to i want the audience to stick on only to these two people and it's not important right it's not important after a point because it's literally only revathi and shane who can understand each other because uh, even the council is not really able to understand what they are going through they are not able to help of course the 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 brother in law character the, the uncle character he's from an, a different period he does not know how to help them at all so uh, it's also important that they figure out their issue together right yeah it's uh, it's uh, see um, as an audience we try to connect with asha and um, vinu but uh, as a as a as another perspective uh, who is uh, you know his uncle who you know we've seen a lot of uncles like yeah. that who, the advisor who, yeah who, who, <laughs> yeah who tries to advise but uh, they try to in a way they're trying to help but they're not really understanding the problem but the best solution is to you know get away from that problem but how do you get away from that problem it's uh, it's something that uh, you know they're in a very helpless state and so there's kind of different perspective to it that which saiju kurups comes in as a rational man as a logical man and even him <laughs> he is not able to figure out what is happening and uh, the uncle character who's a very you know again uh, the well typical, meaning but uh, useless yeah <laughs> useless so how do you how do you try to explain all these things to these people and so 
yeah it's all about play, you know showing different people's perspective but again sticking on to these two characters uh, so a lot of it i think by design needs to be ambiguous right well, i never thought of logic i just wanted the experience to be because you can't explain logic in in a fictional <laughs> thing but how do you convey uh, the the quality of realism into a fictional story is what i tried to try to achieve and that can be through a very a uh, minimal way like you mentioned and uh, you know a very subtle way which is not loud and uh, yeah those are the few elements which strengthened this idea and um, there are scenes where um, if you if you remember in the first scene where you know there's a lot of static shot where shane is have, going into the kitchen having a piece of a biscuit and yeah. uh, you know it's a long long take it's a long shot and it stretches for more than one one and a half minutes and uh, shane as an actor he's doing a lot over there but as an audience you're looking at something you know on a static frame for a for a lengthier time which is very discomforting which is i feel it very personally discomforting so scenes like that and uh, you're stretching that 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 tension until uh, it starts to feel very repetitive and it starts to feel very redundant and and then you start guessing what am i watching what is what is happening until it it breaks us down with a another kind of distraction which comes from some other room until you realize time and space and tension in a very different way so i all those scenes i try to achieve uh, a certain pace where uh, then it slowly shift to into a horror genre saying that okay now you're watching a a kind of a horror film so that's a mood that i tried to carry yeah what is your notes for the people who stayed in that house before because it's not really an old house right it's probably a 15 year old house or a 20 year old house uh, yeah. not even that much i feel you know so how how have you kind of written the residents of that house uh, you know like uh, stayed before. Uh, what kind of people are there yeah who stayed before there it doesn't really matter actually because <laughs> because you know Uh, that's why it, it it connects us so much with the past because uh, you know uh, over here when i show those paranormal elements they are just represented as tragic beings who are trapped between life and death and uh, they don't make a terrifying entry <laughs> they they're just there all the time so uh, it doesn't really matter when the characters have totally resolved you know it's a way because uh, you know uh, that's why i didn't emphasize more on who was there before or what happened to them and uh, what could happen to uh, you know uh, what ha- it, horror stories are always about tragedies right right it's all uh, always about stories about uh, the past uh, it's about uh, people who are left behind i remember reading a very famous quote i think it's uh, uh, a man is not dead when his name is still spoken so that thought kept me <laughs> for a it was inside my head for a long time and so so yeah it doesn't really matter what they are as long as i stick on to the character and if they are resolved then that that would be the end of their journey i've got a few theories about the movie myself like you can call them fan theories you can call them whatever but then i want i just want you to kind of tell me you know like if if that's the logic is, is it fair for me to read the film as that uh you know for instance uh especially in the last 15 minutes right everybody you kind of see uh you know in the house uh mm-hmm. isn't it fair for all of them to be the the people who stayed in that house before yes that is that one of your theory <laughs> but th- that's an obvious theory right yes there's an obvious theory yeah 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 because uh, the little girl's hand of course i mean that's the yes. the most obvious one uh, yeah. uh yeah. another thing another yeah yeah uh, but they don't mean any harm that's what i think makes it a little more scary i think yes. there's just people who want to stay in that house with you yeah they they just watch you from afar they don't they just uh, looking at you and uh, you know observing you like i mentioned it, they don't cause any you know any any kind of uh, trouble for whoever is yeah. there in that house they're just uh, a tragic being just lost and looking at you that's what make makes you even scary thinking that you know they were there not in the not only on the 
on the on the climax part of the scene uh, of the film they were there throughout you know they were the remnants who were left behind those were the characters yeah those three people and a theory that i had was uh, i i fe- i felt like at least until the last night i felt like there's only one person in that house who can see the other beings the remnants or whatever you want to call them mm-hmm. so i felt like the, the, the it's only after the grandmother died was shane nigam able to see it because it, it, it felt like she was living in the grandmom's was living in the house for whatever reason she's able to see it and then mm-hmm. she kind of died and became one of them and it's yeah. only after that did i feel shane nigam was able to see uh, these uh, three or four other people living in that same house uh, what do you what, what do you have to kind of say about that theory uh, see we never mentioned uh, when they came into this house you know uh, when did they move into this house or uh, did they have any kind of experience before but uh, since i showed a death recently in the very uh, the first act of the film which is the which is a triggering point so you very much connected to whatever is happening inside the house you know so that's the kind of de- deception i want to create right from the beginning where you know could it be the grandmother what did she see you know <laughs> did she you know uh, uh, did she get hurt or how did she die there are a lot of unanswered questions if you look in look at that but uh, they might have had experience before but like i mentioned uh, you know i don't i never revealed <laughs> when did they came when they came to this house so yeah it's uh, you can you can interpret how you they can <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, yeah another thing i i really enjoyed is how you used sound of course uh, even speaking yeah. technically the sound design is amazing but even like narrative choices that you made by the use of sound uh it's mm. it's so interesting because the it's when i watched the film a second time that i realized that uh there's two people crying in that house it's not yeah. just revathi who's crying there's also yeah. another woman crying there and that is something i noticed only the second time and yeah. uh i also noticed that uh there was a particular disturbing sound uh, which i couldn't place the when i watched it the first time and mm. uh, when i watched it again i realized that that's the sound of the rope like the the tightening of of the rope yeah Uh, yeah, yeah. so are these things that you uh, you you written or is this something that you kind of collaborate and decide with the sound sound guy uh, i had this thoughts uh, while i wrote the script i had an idea uh, what kind of sound has to play you know when you are uh, in those characters head because uh, already we are showing a genre which can create a heightened reality so sound plays a lot in terms of that and uh, how sound you know that designing that uh, so those sounds can uh, strengthen the central idea just to uh, uh, you know create confusion and in a very very subtle way so i have only tried to uh, sh- you know play um add music when i am not able to uh, tell story without the use of sound so if you notice there is a lot of uh, balance between subtle folly effects and then the music which has you know uh, uh, there's a theme for the background score so yeah definitely sound strengthens something uh, you know to the central idea which i had in my initial thoughts but you know the the third um, um version of a film can only be only be found during the editing process so we had a i had the liberty to you know uh, have utilize that time because uh, right after the shooting we went on the you know the second lockdown happened and we were stuck in a place for a you know you know for a couple of months you know i had the uh, uh, the liberty to work with uh, anwar rashid my producer and uh, put in his thoughts and every day we were you know shooting at things and exchanging ideas and you know discussing uh, you know regarding the sound and how to d- have a you know separate design and uh, yeah it it just formed very organically for me and for the you know or the whole process happened very organically so some things worked you know until you you know don't experiment with <laughs> certain things you don't you don't you don't uh, you know that's the beauty of cinema right it's a, it's a poetry of those moving images and if you notice few of the films they are being imprinted 
inside our head for a for a reason and those reason have some kind of a profound meaning that's that's because of the uh, orchestrated movements of the camera of the sound and all those things which which forms that poetry of the image and that's the end of the day the you know that's that's the magic that movie creates so yeah uh, sound had to be uh, something that's you know had to have a script on for his own but it just happened organically over the course of post production stage so what is there in your notes did, did you have all this written down in your notes as okay this is where we use this sound you know was something like that a part of the notes uh, i had uh, most of the scenes i i wanted to have it very plain uh, maybe play around with just the ambient sound or uh, you know some kind of uh, eerie you know those kind of sound effects but most of it was based on that silence uh, i thought if uh, if i could play around with silence more it's it it's more creepier actually you know when you have a visual and when there is no sound that is giving you comfort <laughs> you know strength you know supporting you it's even scarier so when i wrote the screenplay uh, i had in my mind where uh, you know these portion shouldn't have any and this portion should have some kind of music we have those thoughts but only on the post production stage we try and work out many things with the editor and uh, we you know there is some magic that happens during that process so it just happened like that so yeah finally what i found found like really beautiful beautiful about the film is it's is that it's basically about a, a lack of trust or isolation and all those kind of things it's two people yeah. who are different islands who live in the same house like there's no connection yeah. there's complete communication breakdown between both of them and yeah. uh, you know even when you said something like this in a in a family setting uh, the way they overcome this is i mean obviously an external problem but something external that brings them together but it's yeah. uh, so often it, the solution is always so melodramatic right it's usually like a problem where somebody comes and usurps the land or you know uh, or somebody's coming and attacking them from the outside that's what kind of connects them right but in this yeah. like it's such a beautiful moment when revathi just comes out of her room and she nigams there complaining saying that the glass is moving and then yeah. the second there's another sound that both of them hear together uh, yeah. i think that's the second when shane is like dude she gets me yeah. now like he finally yeah, gets me yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it is and it's it, it's it, it that happens at the most terrifying scene of the film but yeah. it's also comforting because it's like now i'm not alone anymore yeah now you know? you're not alone anymore yeah correct yeah. correct that is that is such an ingenious like use of horror right you know fear is always a very personal experience it's it's never shared it's always personal so at that moment when it becomes a shared experience all together there's a kind of relief that happens in in our heads like you know uh, in the audience but uh, again when i try to achieve that emotions uh, on their face you know uh, i try to create another distraction at the very next fraction of a, of a second after the glass moment uh, revathi ma'am comes out of the kitchen and then she says uh, you know the glass is moving and then she goes towards that glass but suddenly there's a distraction so that is something you know uh, unexpected right you know <laughs> that unpredictability is always there uh, you know when you tell a story like that uh, so is one of my favorite scenes and we have discussed it you know, with the, the actors quite for for some time how to choreograph those sequences and uh, how to balance those moments so yeah when fear becomes um Uh, a collective shared yeah <laughs> shared yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, it's more comforting and then that's a moment you know that you know actually yeah, that becomes very very helpful <laughs> and that's yeah. when you kind of understand the point he was trying to make also because his his girlfriend is not getting the point but uh, even his mother is not for shane um, i think um, his main uh, fear was a fear of uh, you know losing the loved ones and uh, mm. that is that was his main fear and the that's the crux of the the story where you 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 think that something external is not uh, what really matters it has to come within and uh, you know if you can't 
uh, be with your loved ones, then living itself doesn't make any sense. And if you can't share happiness, there is absolutely no meaning to live on. So these characters has gone through those moments and, uh, you know, and once they resolved, there's a happy moment to it. So there is a, there's kind of a positivity in that, you know, all this, the energy level to- totally changes. But uh, once <laughs> those energy levels have changed, I have to, you know, show the meat. <laughs> I have to bring out something. So, yeah, it's kind of a tricky uh, towards the end, but uh, it's all played, you know, with that tension and how to build suspense in those moments. Last question to you, like, you've just made, like, horror as a genre is almost non-existent in Malayalam, right? Uh, first of all, why do you feel that it's such a tough genre to crack, you know, like, uh, uh, because very few people have the instinct or the knack to really produce a great horror film, which I think you've done. Uh, and uh, oh, what is the one biggest lesson that you learned from in the process of creating uh, something so scary, you know, and so natural at the same time? Uh, I, uh, I, I just saw the whole movie as, uh, you know, uh, 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 two characters getting resolved. And uh, I never thought of it as a you know horror film in particular, uh, but uh, I wanted only the horror elements of it to work uh, the way you know um, if I could uh, stick onto the characters and trying to create empathy on them. So horror is a is a is a tough genre. Like I mentioned, it walks a very thin line, and one uh, <laughs> one miss can uh, <laughs> it goes into it can backfire anytime. It's not about the writing, right? You just keep keep uh, uh, like shooting or you keep editing until you somehow achieve the effect. Is that how it works? Uh, it's, it, it's about writing, of course, because I had to see the whole film inside my head yeah, yeah. Uh, before yeah. the, the filming process. I, I had my DOP with me, Mr. Shana Jalal. So uh, when we had this house, we could play around with a lot of, uh, you know, how to stage a scene and uh, how to block a scene. And I had to storyboard everything because mm. I want to see it on paper and very peacefully <laughs> before the shooting started. <laughs> so in that way, for a, for a horror genre, it works. Uh, storyboarding as a tool. So, uh, you know, when you go to the set, you are able to achieve only around 70 to 80% of hmm. it. You know, rest hmm. 20% comes out of improvisation or there, there can be some kind of a chaos. But hmm. at the end of the day, it's a movie, it's filming and chaos can become sometimes like I mentioned, a poetry. Yeah. So yeah. that's where you realize in this, you know, in all this, all, in all this process, uh, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, and uh, it's, that's the magic that movie creates. You know, you never know what you're gonna achieve at the end. You will have only the initial idea, and it can shape into many things as you, you know, you know, as you progress. It shapes into many things. So in that way, uh, it was very. I don't know how how better to say it, but it just happened very organically yeah uh, thank you rahul like you thanks uh, for i have so many i had so many doubts in my man, uh, mind and thanks for like kind of placing it in context and covering all those questions for me I and, hope I, and I, I assure you doubts. i think it's only <laughs> starting I, yeah, it's just one set yeah. of questions i think in the in the coming days as more and more people discover the movie the amount of yeah. theories that you're going to be bombarded with i think it's going to be crazy and everything is relevant because like you said it's a film that kind of is is made so ambiguously that I think it, it, it leads to a lot of multiple ways of reading and understanding. And which is something so nice in a, in a film like this, right? It's like a, a genre film that, you, that can be read and understood in so many ways. But definitely I, I could achieve all these visions uh, definitely with the help of my crew, my cast. It's a very collective effort. It's, of course, it's a, it's a thought that I conceived a couple of years ago, but that thoughts became a reality because of a great cast, because of a great crew, my DOP, my editors, even the art department, the costume, everything just just worked for me. And more than that, uh, it was an honor to work with uh, the production house, to have a support from Anwar Rashid, my producer. And right from day one, he has been, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, supportive of my thoughts, even if even though some of them were very crazy, very experimental, he was very, very supportive right 
until this day so that strengthens you uh, or you know anyone as uh, it gives you confidence so it's a collective effort and i i really thank everybody what we have achieved today thanks so much yeah. rahul uh, looking forward to your next film thank you so much thank you